Welcome back to Barbecue and Bottles. I'm Jared, and today we're gonna to be doing a steak experiment where we test the difference between table salt, sea salt, and kosher salt. We're gonna do a blind taste test at the end and see if we can tell the difference between each of these, and we'll let you know which one we prefer over the others. So if you're into that kind of thing, stick with us. So these three salts are probably the most common salts that you'll be able to find. So with table salt, the real differentiating factor here is that this is probably the most processed out of the salts that we're dealing with. There's some additives that prevent this from clumping. There's also added iodine. And really the history behind that is there are a bunch of populations that weren't getting enough iodine. And so they ended up adding iodine into salt as a way of getting that into the, the people's diet and, and consumption because it's a really important chemical just for the functioning of your thyroid. This is most commonly found inland and a lot of this salt is actually mined. Now, it would originally be sea salt. It's just those seas have now just moved on and you've actually got a mine to get access to what is usually table salt. Now, chemically, all these salts are almost identical. They're all at least 98% sodium chloride, but there are some of these fine differences that will actually make one salt different from the next. So this sea salt, when you open it up, it's really coarse crystals and it's almost like a pyramid's formed. And that's because the process for this takes actual seawater and then there's an evaporation process in where you extract the salt and that process leaves you with those pyramid style crystals, which is really beautiful. And, and this is most commonly used as a finishing salt. Now, kosher salt, really the only difference between kosher salt and table salt is the elimination of those additives the additive for, to prevent clumping, as well as no iodine, but then also the actual size of, of the salt grinds. So these salt grinds are a little bit thicker than the refined table salt. And what that means is there's actually more air per volume. So if you end up having a cup of kosher salt versus a cup of table salt, the weight of the kosher salt is actually about half of that of the table salt. And that's all just because of the actual size of the, the granulated salt themselves. So if a recipe calls for a certain amount of salt, if you use that same volume of salt in terms of table salt versus kosher salt, this will be way saltier because you're getting almost twice the volume of salt. So it's really important when you're using a recipe just to actually follow the type of salt that they're, they've indicated. And if they don't indicate a salt, I'd really suggest you go with something like kosher, just so that you're not over salting whatever it is that you're making. So I wanna put that weight thing to a test here. So we've got our scale set up, we've got it zeroed out with a measuring cup, and we're gonna get two thirds of a cup of both of these salts in here. And we'll just see how much of a weight difference there actually is. So that's 150 grams or 5.3 ounces for the Americans here. So I'll get this poured back in. Now we'll do the same with the table salt. So now I'll take our table salt and you can see just how fine these individual crystals are. Yeah, already past 150 grams. Yeah, so 274 grams, not quite double, but it's dramatically more weight of salt than when we were using the kosher. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to get this back in here and then we'll bring you back. Okay, now we're gonna prep our steaks for cooking and we've got three really good USDA ribeyes here, some nice marbling. And we're only going to be using salt as a seasoning here because we really wanna see if we can taste the difference between one over the next. And so we've gone with a high grade protein here just so that all we want is the salt to speak for itself. I'll flip that over, get both of these sides with salt and be generous here we've got some thick steaks get that padded in perfect now we'll go in with a little bit of our table salt yeah and you can really tell when you're seasoning this that the salt almost just spills out of your fingers kind of like you're trying to grasp onto sand at a beach get that padded in flip it over and we've had these steaks out of the fridge for about 20 minutes just to temper them. All right, and now we'll go in with our sea salt. You can just see how big the actual salt crystals are on this one. 
All right, now with these steaks seasoned up, let's fire up the grill. We've got all the burners turned on, including the one in the middle of our sear station here. And I've deliberately left this grill messy. So I didn't clean up from the last cook because I want to do a little bit of a test. So I posted about this grill floss on our TikTok and it just blew up. You know, a ton of people actually like this idea where these little grooves wrap right around a grill grate, just like this. And then you pull it backward and forward and you can get a perfectly clean grill grate. This is the cleaning method that I follow 99% you know, of the time. And I think it works great. It does take a little bit of time to do every individual grate, but it's not that bad in my mind because you get a perfectly clean grill at the end. And you know, for those of you who have OCD, I think you'd find this like really, really refreshing. So one of the number one comments we got on that TikTok video was you should just use an onion. So that's what we're gonna try and do and compare. So we've got this nice and cleaned up over here and we're gonna see if we clean this side with an onion, just how that compares. So for the onion, you're just gonna wanna cut off the top of it and you wanna expose some of the inside of that onion. Now this grill is ripping hot, so it should have loosened up a bit of that dirt. So we're just gonna grab it, take that across the grill. It smells great, I'll tell you that much. And there you go. So you know what, that actually worked pretty well. The only knock I'd have on this method is A, you're just ruining an onion, and B, it doesn't actually get the bottom of the grill grates. With this one, you can actually wrap it around the full grill grate, turn it like that, and it gets the underside. But, you know, otherwise, like, that onion trick actually works pretty well. Now that we've cleaned it, we're just gonna get a little bit of barbecue grill oil on here. Just get this oiled up before we put our steaks down. We're gonna be searing our steaks off right in the middle of the grill because that's where we've got two double burners and an extra burner for the sear station. So we'll get this lid closed down, get the temp up to about 600 Fahrenheit, and then we'll bring you back for the sear. So now, time to get the steaks on. Now we're not doing this on the charcoal grill. Again, we wanted to isolate for the flavor profile the salt. We didn't want that charcoal deliciousness just to that, give that smoky flavor and end up impacting our, our preference here. So you can see, on this steak, which was the kosher salt steak, there's still a few granules of salt that haven't fully absorbed into the steak. The table salt steak, that's all fully absorbed. And then the sea salt, you can still see some fairly large crystals still on the surface. So it just shows you how long it should take each of those salts to absorb into the beef. So after 90 seconds, we're gonna flip these, or turn them 90 degrees, and this is gonna give us those hash marks that we're looking for on grilled steaks. We'll let it go for another 90 seconds before we flip them over. All right, these are gone for another 90 seconds, so we'll flip that over. Got some good hash marks on those. Do the other side. Now I'll turn these 90 degrees. All right, so now we're gonna turn off all these burners. We'll leave one on. And because these are thick steaks, we're gonna need to finish them off indirect over here before they hit their final level of doneness. So I'm gonna bring this one to the front, switch up their orientation here a little bit. And again, we've got kosher, table, and sea salt. So we're just gonna check our internal temp here you can see this is registering 108, 103, 102, 104 in the back. So they still have a little ways to go, but we wanna finish these indirect because we've already got that sear on them. So we're just gonna close the lid down. We'll check the temps periodically. So we're at 130, so this is perfect temp. We're gonna pull off the stakes.
All right, we've got the steaks off the grill. They've been resting here for about seven or eight minutes. So now we're gonna carve in, see how they turned out. It's just looking at these guys. They're beautiful, medium rare looking slice. Similar over here. Just love cooking the temp. You always get your desired doneness. So here, we're just gonna cut off a little bite-sized piece of each of these. And now, like I said, this is gonna be a blindfolded taste test. So I'm gonna see if I can actually tell the difference. So we've got the three steaks. I'm gonna go through, take a bite of each of them, and then I'll see if I can pick out which was which over the course of this taste test. So Kai is gonna help us here. We've got Kai helping us shoot some videos. So if you've noticed a dramatic increase in the shooting quality of these videos, you've got Kai to thank for that. So he's gonna pass us a fork with some beef here. The first one. What do you think? I think I've got an idea on that one. Uh -huh. I'll save my opinion till the end. Okay, so that's the first one. This is the second piece. All right, down the hatch with the second one. Cheers, everybody. Okay. I've got a guess for that one. It tastes a little different. Mm -hmm. Definitely different. Now for the last one. Okay, number three. There we go, it's the last piece. All right. Yeah, so I think I've got this figured out. Mm, that was another really good one. So I think the first one was the sea salt, and I'm pretty sure of that because part of it was just a great flavor profile. But I think with the sea salt, there were still a few crystals that hadn't fully dissolved. And so as you bit into that steak, you could get a little hint of salt still on the surface and a bit of crunchiness from that. So I'm pretty sure that's the sea salt. The second one, I'm gonna say was the table salt. And I was expecting a really metallic taste because of the iodine and the other additives that they actually put in table salt. It wasn't as pronounced as I was expecting, but it was definitely there. So my guess is the second one was this. And then lastly was the kosher salt. This is our, our usual go-to salt. So this steak just tasted like the typical steak that we make. And that's my guess. So Kai, how did you we do? A plus. Really? Exactly we nailed all three? Yeah. Okay, so there you go. So I guess you can tell the difference. So there are a bunch of wasps out here, so we had to take those steaks inside. We've shared them with the rest of the family. And frankly, the conclusion was that any of those steaks were fine to eat. It's not like if I had a big ribeye and only had table salt that I'd refuse to eat the steak. But it's more just if you're spending a lot of money on beef, which these days is just crazy expensive, you might as well use a salt that just makes the final product a little better, which I'd recommend as either the kosher salt or the sea salt. So if you like this video, smash that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel if you learned something here, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for tuning in.